Cape Town. Situated on the southwest tip of the African continent, this South African jewel attracts millions of tourists to its beautiful shores every year. Both humans and many species of marine animals utilize the beaches and surrounding oceans that form a vibrant ecosystem teeming with life. If you take a closer look, you will see that like many beaches around the world, Cape Town has the telltale signs of plastic pollution. Plastic discarded by humans is causing havoc with our planet, and the oceans and marine animals are taking the brunt of the damage. It is widely believed that by 2050, there will be more plastic in the oceans than living creatures. We went to speak to some experts from SANCOP to find out what kind of impact plastic has on our coastline. My name is David Roberts, I'm the vet here at SANCOP and I look after all the clinical cases that come in. So um, often our most important cases are wounds and um, very skinny birds, but uh, we also look after a lot of chicks and um, we see a lot of cases that are caused by people. And one of the problems we see with people, um, or human caused cases, are those entangled in plastic. And so we try to encourage people as much as possible to reduce their use of single use plastics. So lots of the cases that we see that are related to plastic are entanglement issues. And so those are birds that are tangled up and they can um, either have like a ring of something caught around the mouth, around the neck or one of the other body parts. So that's, that's seen quite often um, and unfortunately we often see birds that have died from it. Occasionally we get those that are still alive that have only been tangled for a short time and then we can cut the plastic and they can recover. The consumption of plastic is also a big problem with um, all wildlife um, and we see it especially with the seabirds that skim feed over the surface of the, the ocean. So we have problems with small pieces of plastic that, are, that go through the feed chain, they may have been eaten by a fish and then eaten by a bird or they get picked up by the birds themselves. Um, it's a problem we call microplastics um, and because plastic doesn't biodegrade it might break up and it just becomes smaller and smaller pieces but those small pieces continue to affect the ecosystem um, and they affect species from uh, big pelicans all the way down to little shrimps and things in the ocean um, and what the unfortunate thing is you might get a fish that eats plastic it dies it biodegrades the plastic comes out of the fish and it affects the next next fish it's a problem that doesn't go away Kyle I'm a research intern at Sankob and I've been doing a project looking at uh, plastic entanglement ingestion over the last 10 years, so from 2008 to 2018. And um, what we've noticed is that there's been a, an increase in uh, the number of cases that we've seen relating to plastic entanglement ingestion over the last 10 years. The three main species that we see most commonly affected by plastic entanglement ingestion are the gulls, so the hartlips gull and the kelp gull. Um, that's because of where they feed and the way they feed. So they're often in urbanized areas and they're exposed to, um, they're at a greater risk of, of plastic entanglement and ingestion. So 20% of the affected birds that we see were African penguins and they were mostly affected by plastic entanglement. Um, we did see that the younger birds are more affected by ingestion whereas the older birds are more affected by entanglement, probably because the adults are out at sea foraging where they, where they have a greater risk of being affected by entanglement, whereas the chicks and the younger birds are in the colony. So they might have been fed by the parents or they might have found plastic around the nest and ingested it. So the, the, the problem that we're seeing with plastic is that when we open up these birds, the, the plastic cannot pass through the digestive tract of the system. So it sits in the stomach and it affects the bird in many ways. For example, it can't take as much food in as it would normally and also it can cause ulceration and damage to the, the, the stomach. It's not all doom and gloom as Aquasky, a local Cape Town company, is doing their bit to fight this problem. Hi guys, welcome to Aquasky, based out in the Pole Valley. 
As you've must be seen in our previous episodes, we started out in 2017 uh, primarily with, with plastic bottles. That's always been a pain for, for Aquasky because we've always been wanting to look after the environment and but it was a necessity to start off that way. Um, we then moved over to the glass bottle and luckily for us we've now partnered up with a very proudly South African Cape Town based company who's um, now manufacturing plant based bottles, 100% plant based bottles and we're now filling it up with our own water, our atmospheric generated aqua, which makes it the first in the world. And we're excited to do that. I mean, if you look at Cape Town, we are basically surrounded by the oceans on the west, on the south, on the east. And it's very close to our heart to look after our environment. And we've been trying to do this since 2017. This is the bottle that you're going to be seeing in store very shortly. Um, yeah, it's quite easy to identify. Um, at the bottom here, it says, I'm not plastic, compostable, made from plants and then we've also got our branding on it as well and here at Aquasky this is the way that we we're trying to help the environment especially in and around Cape Town on our beaches and yeah I think it's kind of exciting and fun at the same time and we want to make it that way as well so why don't you guys leave a comment below and tell us what you're doing to to help the environment and yeah, yeah let's collaborate and see what we can do together cheers we are the caretakers of this planet it is up to each of us to do what we can to limit our negative impact and maximize our positive impact on our beautiful home we call Earth.